In this video, we're going to look at extending our understanding of differentiation and build up a list of standard results. In previous units, we've looked at differentiating a range of algebraic functions. An example might be y is equal to 4x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 3. So if we wanted dy by dx, the first derivative or gradient function, we'd multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. So we'd have 12x squared. Multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by 1, we'd have plus 10x to the first, or just 10x. Multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by 1, we'd just have minus 7. This is to the power of 1, and we drop it now to the power of 0. x to the power of 0 is going to give us 1. Differentiating a constant gave us 0. If you want to see this simply as a constant and the derivative now is 0, or alternatively, you could see this as 3x to the 0, and as soon as we multiply down by the 0, we will now get 0. So if y is equal to 4x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 3, the derivative is 12x squared plus 10x minus 7. And of course, you wouldn't write for 1. Using function notation, if we had the f of x, for example, was now 4x to the power of 1 half, then we had now minus 3x to the power of minus 2, and then we had now plus 4x to the power of minus 7 over 2, then we could find f dashed of x. f dashed of x was the first derivative or the gradient function. These essentially are the same thing, we're just using different notation. So we'd multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. So we get 2x to the power of minus 1 half. Multiplying down, I get plus 6x, and we would drop the power by 1, so minus 3. And then we'd multiply down, and we would end up now getting minus 14x to the power of minus 9 over 2. So this was basic differentiation. We could say in general, if we had y is equal to ax to the power of n, the derivative dy by dx was equal to n a x to the power of n minus 1. This is simply saying multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. In this unit, we're going to look at differentiating products, quotients, and then functions of functions. A product is when we've got one or more function multiplied by another. So, for example, we might have x multiplied by cos x, so x cos x. If we have a quotient, we might, for example, have 2x over cos x. So we have one function of x divided by another. Or we could have had a function of t. It really doesn't matter. It's just a case that one function will be divided by one or more other functions. A function of a function is what we've looked at before. So a composite function. So for example, now if we have cos of 2x, we would say that the outside function is cos x and the inside function is 2x. So we've got now a composition of two different functions or if you like, a function of a function. Before we go on to look at the specific techniques we need to use to differentiate those, I just want to build up a standard set of results. So if we're differentiating a product, we would use a product rule. If we're differentiating a quotient, we use the quotient rule. And if we're differentiating a function of a function or a composite function, we use what we call the chain rule. And in later videos, we will look at all of the techniques that we need to differentiate those types of functions. Let's just start with some basics and recap what differentiation is. When we're talking about a derivative or differentiation, we're talking about the rate of change. So how one quantity changes in response to the change in another. The easiest way to spot this, or see it at least, is real world situations. So if we take displacement, displacement is a function of time. So if you're in a car and you're moving backwards and forwards in a car, that now is displacement. And we could say now that s, s would be displacement, s would be some function of time. So as time changes, the displacement changes. The rate of change of displacement with respect to time is velocity. The rate of change of velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So we can say ds dt is v and then dv dt is a. Or if you like, ds d2s over dt squared, which is the second derivative of displacement, is acceleration. So we're looking at now at successive rates of change. So, for example, if our displacement was a cubic function, a function of time, so it was something like t cubed plus 3t squared plus 6, then if we wanted to find velocity, 
that would be a quadratic. If we wanted to find acceleration, acceleration would be linear. So that's just recapping what we've looked at uh, on a number of occasions before. When we're talking about derivatives, we're talking about now the rate of change. Many of the functions that we're going to meet aren't algebraic. So these are examples of algebraic functions. So this is a polynomial. So we've got now descending powers of x. We've got x cubed, we've got now x squared, we've got 7x and we've got 3. We've got now another algebraic expression here for our function. What we're going to look at are trig functions, exponentials and even log functions as we go on. And we will just have now, before we move on to the chain rule, which is where we're going next, just a list of now the function and its derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is just now, down the page, have my list. On each of these, we're going to go into far more depth when I look at each particular technique. So when we're saying now, for example, y, let's take now y is equal to sine x. The derivative now, dy by dx, is going to give me cos x. And that's just now a standard result. We will go on to look at why that works. But for now, it's something that I want you to store in your brain. The reason being is when we go on to look at functions of functions, when we're differentiating an outside function, we might be asked to differentiate sine x. And knowing the standard result can often make the work initially easier. So if y is equal to sine x and dy by dx is equal to cos x, if y is equal to cos x, the derivative dy by dx is minus sine x. And again, later we'll see now how that works. If we have tan x, y is equal to tan x, then dy by dx is sec squared x. If we have sec x, let's write this here, so sec x, then the derivative is sec x tan x. So we've got sec x tan x. If we have now cot x or cotangent x, the derivative is going to be now minus cosec squared x. If we have now cosec x, cosec x, the derivative is minus cosec x cot x. So they are the main six trig functions. So we have our main sine x, cos x and tan x and then we have now, so these are our major trig functions and then we've got now these standard results for the minor ones. So somewhere along uh, in your paper or in your working, just jot those down so at least we can work through some examples of functions of functions. So for an, a nice example right here, let's just come down here. If we were now, uh, we were given that y is equal to sine x plus 3x plus 1, then what we could say then is dy by dx, the gradient function, is going to be cos x, so we've differentiated sine x, and then we would differentiate 3x, which would give me plus 3, and differentiating the constant would give me 0. So that's a nice example. The reason I'm going this way around is that we might have now y is equal to sine of 2x plus cos of 3x, and then we might have minus uh, e to the x. Now, we're going to come on to a standard result for this shortly, but the derivative of this now, and we'll write it just here, dy by dx, and this is by the chain rule. This is something we're going to go on and look at. This now is 2 cos 2x. Then we would have minus 3 sine 3x, and then we'd have minus e to the x. And this leads me on to where I'm about to go. So, the reason I want to build these up is these are functions of functions. So we've got two functions here. We've got sine x and we've got now 2x. So this is now where x would be. x, we've got 2x. And in the same way, this is a function of a function. So we could say now that we've got two functions. We could say the f of x is equal now to cos x. And then we could say the g of x. That's right, the g of x. We've got now 3x. So what we've actually got here, we would do now g first, then f. We could say this is the f of g of x. So the f of g of x is cos of 3x. And we would look in a later video on what we call the chain rule to differentiate these. So let's go back to our standard set of results. If we have now the exponential function, y is equal to e to the x, then the derivative is e to the x. And that's something that we've looked at in a previous video. If we have a natural log, ln of x, the derivative is 1 over x. So what we've got here now are our list of standard results. We've got the, the major trig functions, we've got the minor ones, and then we've got exponentials and logs. 
So this is really quite a superficial introduction to uh, differentiation or differentiating functions that aren't algebraic as such. Um, so I think in the next video what we'll do is look at the chain rule and look at functions of functions and then go on to specifically look at differentiating a range of different trig functions. So for example if we had sine squared x, so we've got a power now on our sine term. Or if we had now for example the natural log of cos x where we've got a function of a function. So write these down, tape them away and then in the next video we will start to look at the chain rule.